Hey you guys, what's going on? Before I start the video, I just wanted a quick mention. I do have a Facebook and an Instagram page where I like to post up updates and what's going on in the shop and pictures, stuff like that. So go ahead and check that out. And as always, remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Yeah guys, so I messed up really bad in my last video. No, this is not a V-neck. I'm wearing a microphone now. I'm actually trying something new here. It's a uh, wireless audio system. So we're gonna see how that works out. We'll see how this video sounds. But yeah, in the, uh, in the last video, if you guys watched it, I made a huge mistake. Not a huge mistake, but I mean a big no-no. And uh, it's something that I should know because uh, you know I learned it a long time ago and I just know better. What I did is I hammered in our main bearing by the inner race. And really I should be hammering it in by the outer race or pressing it in. And I don't know if I was just tired that day or what, but I didn't even notice it until I was watching my own footage. I posted it up anyway, and then you guys really hammered me, <laughs> literally, uh, in the comments. And, you know, I just shouldn't have even posted that up. I should have gone back and done it right because I don't want to be posting stuff up that is, you know, bad habits and just, you should be doing that way. Even, even if I'm saying that you shouldn't do it that way, I shouldn't even be posting that up. So I'm going to make it right. Now it is possible that that bearing that I tapped in there before is perfectly okay. And the reason that I say that is because I tapped it in and it was pretty easy. It wasn't difficult. To, I wasn't really smashing it in. And regardless, it could still have caused damage. So that's why I'm going to replace this. And somebody actually mentioned something that really made me want to change this out. And that was that if this engine does fail, I'm not going to know whether it was the hot rods crank or it could be because of the bearing being installed incorrectly because that is, as I was saying in my last video, what I think is the main reason why engines fail early because stuff was, was installed incorrectly. And I think that's why hot rods cranks has such a bad rap and I'd be doing such a disservice to them putting in a bearing an incorrect way. And then if the engine does fail, you know, who knows if it was the crank or if it was because of uh, me putting the bearing in incorrectly. Now this actually bothered me so much. I actually did a fair amount of research on incorrectly installing bearings, believe it or not. And information was kind of scarce, but I talked to some of the guys at work because I'm a forklift technician now. We work with heavy equipment and we're constantly changing out bearings. And I also found information directly from Timekin. Timekin is a huge bearing company. And basically the information that I gathered is that the quality of bearings has gone up drastically over the years and that has left a lot more room for error when you're installing the bearings. Now that doesn't mean that they should be installed incorrectly and they're going to be just fine. It just means that the quality of the bearings is better and you might be able to get away with it. If you, in, if you incorrectly install them, you might be able to get away with it. Now, that being said, I still think this should be replaced and I think you guys would agree, especially if this was a customer's quad or anything like that, it should just be done the right way. And that's why I went and bought the second bearing. I'd rather not take any chances. Even if this bearing's perfectly fine, it's worth it to throw the new bearing in there before I get this thing together. That's why there's been a slight delay. The bearing literally came in the mail today. So now it's time to throw it in, make sure it's just not gonna be an issue. Here it is here. Got a brand new bearing. It actually came in a nicer case than the other one. The other one was like, um, I guess kind of like shrink wrapped. This one's kind of got a nicer case. I think the other one was new old stock. And this one's brand spanking new, so it has to be better. And I found this in the basement. This was with our scrap metal. I don't know what the heck my pop used this for, but he said it's uh, of no use to him anymore. So I'm going to grind this thing out and make this nice and smooth. And if you see here, it'll fit on the outer race of that bearing really nice. And I should be able to hammer it in. And I'm going to throw this thing in the freezer again. And what I'm going to do this time, once I split these cases, I'm going to throw the other half in the oven. Because a lot of you guys put it in the comments to do that. And it is a method that I've heard of before, but I've never actually done that method. I always just heat up this race with a torch. And, you know, that works good too. But I want to see how much better it really is or if it's better at all doing the oven method. And we'll try it that way and we'll smack it in. So let me get these cases apart. Thank God for this impact gun.
That was really easy. So easy that I don't even know what to say about it. So that was the original method that I was going to use to split these cases before I bought the case splitter. You can see how easy that was. Granted, this case just came apart, so it's going to be easier splitting it the second time around. You can see all of the anaerobic gasket maker all around the edges. So I'm going to rub all this stuff off. And then we'll get to tapping this old one out before we put the new one in. I'm going to take off our oil screen here so that our case can lay nice and flat, nice and flat when it's upside down. Now, I don't even know why I'm really doing this because I'm never going to reuse this bearing, but I found this here. This is actually for a ball joint installer for a car. It fits the outer race almost perfectly and it still fits inside this lip. It'll go like so and I should be able to tap that right on through. So just so I can look at this bearing after I pull it out, I'm really curious what condition this is in. You know, and if I go smashing it out, then that's going to ruin the integrity of it entirely. But really, this one feels like it has less play than the new one. Well, anyways, I'm going to heat this thing up and smash it through. Isn't it funny that I tapped the old bearing out the right way? All right, now it's time to pop this thing in the oven. I got recommendations between 225 and 400 degrees. So I'm gonna go right in the middle at 300 degrees and I'm gonna throw it in there for 20 minutes. I also have our new bearing in the freezer so that thing will shrink while the case expands. Now while that's warming up, I'm gonna make our tool here. And while this did work well, pressing the new bearing out or tapping it out rather, I noticed it did shave a little bit of the edge off. You can actually see some of the hairs of steel and they can fall off and get stuck in the bearing. So this would work most likely and I could probably clean the bearing out, but this is a better size. It's a little bit of a bigger diameter. It fits right on the outer race of that bearing. I'll show you with the older one. You can see it's going to fit on there perfectly, but this is in the way. So I'm just going to cut this piece out that my pop welded in there and make sure this is nice and smooth. And then we'll be able to tap on the other side to press that new bearing in. Oh yeah, that is going to be perfect for tapping in that new bearing. And it's just in time for our freshly baked cases to be done. <gasps> Don't burn yourself. Now we're going to throw our frozen bearing in there. Holy shit. Wow. I don't even know what to say about that. Dude, I literally don't even know what to say about that. This is like trial and error to the extreme. Learn from my mistakes. Putting the cases in the oven and freezing the bearing is definitely the way to go. I am literally amazed that that bearing just dropped right in like that. So this case half is cooling in front of the fan. All there is to do is throw some RTV on both sides of the case. I'm going to be using that anaerobic gasket sealer once again. And then slap the cases together and torque them down to 7.2 pounds. And of course, don't forget to put back in your oil screen and any dowels that you may have removed. Now after we throw some assembly lube on our bearings, we'll slide our cases together.
All that's left to do now is put in our case bolts. I like to run them down with the impact gun and then torque them down. The manual calls for 7.2 foot pounds. I like to tighten them down to 9. The bottom end is done, again, this time the right way. We didn't even have to use this tool that we made. I'm still amazed that that bearing just dropped right in there the way that it did. But, I mean, that's a good thing, right? It's really, really easy to do this time. So we definitely learned something today. That oven technique works really, really well. So for future reference, that was 300 degrees, and I left the cases in there for about 25 minutes. Uh, about five minutes over the 20 minutes that I said earlier, only because it took a little bit longer to create that tool. So 20, 25 minutes is probably perfect. And I had the, the uh, bearing in the freezer the same amount of time. All right, so it is really late at night, so I want to wrap it up. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are happy that I smashed the old bearing out and put a new one in, please give me a thumbs up. If you think that it was going to be fine, let me know in the, the uh, comments below if you think I shouldn't have done this because it was a waste of time and a waste of money. But otherwise, guys, I will see you in the next video. We will be throwing the rest of that motor back together. Sorry for the small delay. Just wanted to wait for those parts to come in. I will see you in the next one. Have a good week. Mm -hmm.